Today, my topic is to share with you some of the future about communication. And if such future comes, what it might affect our lives. So that's the content of the talk. I'd like to first of all say something about the radio waves, and then I'll say something about the 5G vision, and then I'll say something about what things might happen if we have this 5G. And then, obviously, you would like to know when this will be available, and then I'll come back to build the big picture. Okay. The ability to move and to communicate is actually a disruptive technology which is something that we have really taken for granted. Like for example, you talk on the mobile phone, you look at the television on the mobile phone, you catch up with your friends on the mobile phone, you find that we have taken that for granted. In fact, this is actually quite disruptive technology, you find that we have what people normally call 1G, that's really developed in the 1980s, 2G, 1990s, 3G, 2000, at the moment, 2010, we have 4G. And so, people are talking about 5G is coming. And this could be available as early as the year 2018, three years from now, and certainly it will be in large-scale deployment by the year 2020, if you believe what Boris Johnson talked about, and then also at least in the year 2022. So first I'll, I'll give you some idea about what is really radio waves and the communication, wireless communication. Well, wireless communication is essentially you are able to communicate with, from the source to the destination through the free space. Now, for those who might not be technologically savvy, essentially you can think of this as the free space is like parallel system of road works, and this road works so revolve in parallel, and that traffic, dedicated traffic, can move along each of these lanes. So if you have such parallel road work, then you find that we have what we call the frequency spectrum, and the frequency spectrum, you like to look at just really how wide the road is, how fast you can go along the road, and then we talk about the latency, that's really the delay that you will experience on this road, and then we talk about interference from other road users. And also we talk about attenuation, that is really the way that, say, your traffic might be impeded, by whatever reason it is, and then we have line of sight, which may be start talking about blocking, and then reliability of such channels. And we certainly will have the power efficiency, it's like fuel efficiency when you use the road. And then we will have the security issue, because it's in the free space, so people can actually eavesdrop on you. So, 5G vision. Well, what's the 5G vision? Basically what it is, is that for speed, is 10 times to 100 times what currently end user can use. So, 
just to give you some idea that people claim that they already already can achieve 800 gigabit per second. Now, for those who might think that 800 gigabit per second so what? Let me give you an idea what that means. 800 gigabit per second means that if you have high definition film, full length film, let's say it's an hour and a half or two hours, what 800 gigabit per second means is that you can download 35 of them simultaneously in less than one second. So that's really the type of speed that we talk about. Then we talk about the latency, that's the delay. It's five times lower, that's between one to five milliseconds. Now this has some significance. What that means is that you can assume that a road, a car is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour. One millisecond, that car moves 3.3 centimeters. So that's really the type of latency we talk about, the type of delay. And later on, I will allude to this. Then we have the number of connected devices, the devices that are connected to the internet, to the mobile internet, could be billions or tens of billions. People predict something like at least 50 billion devices that's connected to the net. Then we talk about the power efficiency is at least 10 times better than what we might have, as you know that, say, the battery on your mobile phone seems to burn out very quickly, but what we talk about is that at least 100 times better. And then also the volume is 1,000 times larger. Now, for 5G, to be realizable, we will need some kind of standardization. What that means is that say, equipment that's produced by one country, by one manufacturer, must be able to interoperate with another, uh, the equipment produced by another manufacturer, and so this is only through standardization. At the moment, there's no 5G standard at all. And then, secondly, we'll talk about the, what type of technology that might be enabling such 5G vision to be realizable. We find that, well, it's basically making better use of the frequency spectrum that we have. And then we make better use of the higher frequency. That is really basically at the moment you find that with the mobile phone is transmitted at what we call lower part of the microwave frequency, and then you find that if you can transmit at the higher end of the microwave frequency, then you find that it will be faster, except the attenuation will be larger. But what people have been able to find out was that over certain narrow band width they are able to achieve the same type of attenuation as is achievable at the lower frequency end. And then there are other sort of technological improvements, like for example, having small cells to sort in complement to complement macro cells. That's really more technically. So basically, we have cells to carry out the. Uh, microwave channels. And then we find that there will need to be major technological breakthroughs in order for the vision to be achievable. And you find that these, some of these technological breakthroughs have already occurred and being used, but there will be more to come. So let's now look at say what happens if we have 5G, say the type of vision that we talk about. And so we find that we could have what we call the smart city. What that means is that you will find that say 
facility, the utility, the electricity, gas, water, all of them will be utilized more effectively and then also road system, that is what we call intelligent transportation system, will be utilized more effectively and then you find that this is at, so to say, with the environmental friendly in mind. We also can look at remote surgery. And that's why the one millisecond latency is important. Remote surgery, what that means is that basically you can have a robot carrying out this open heart surgery or open brain surgery at a distance. Now, using the connected network that already can be done today, but what we're talking about is through the mobile internet. <coughs> Drivers cars, Google actually claim to have such a car on the road for, and this car has been driving for millions, a couple of millions of miles in all types of roads under all types of weather conditions. And if you listen to the news, Uber claim that they are going to invest into driverless car technology. And so you find that basically this is coming and the one millisecond latency is important because you want to be able to control that car remotely because it's driverless remotely in say for example traffic like in the car like road. Internet of Things, essentially what that means is that we will have quite a lot of so say, sensors placed around the whole city, placed around the environment, that you will be able to monitor the environment or the city for us. And then telepresence. Telepresence which essentially what it means is that you find that you could have full size type of video conference with people who are on the move. And then we could have personalized television or personalized games, if you like to look at it, personalized television that you can be able to watch a number of channels simultaneously and switch between them smoothly. Now we have other technological type of uh, disruptive technology. We could have 3D, 3D printers. And 3D printers, you find that we can print some of these readily. And in fact, what people are talking about now is to be able to print a human organ so that it can be transplanted into a human organ. Drones. So you find that what it is is a really low flying object that's able to take videos, and that's a disruptive technology. Because what it says is that we are able to monitor things from the air, and the technology could be high definition video. Wearable, wearables, like for example, on the right hand side, you find that. There's a Google Glass, and if you have a couple hundred dollar American, then you can even buy one and test out for yourselves. And then we could have fabrics that actually can transmit and receive signals. So people can weave garments out of that. Medical imaging, you find that we have better and better medical imaging devices and clearer medical imaging that instead of having to cut up a person, we can actually see what's inside the person. Then we have other type of thing that we, like for example, the big data that we find that we have so much data and we can mine the data so that we can actually learn from what has happened before 
as well as to mind the pattern and so as to predict for the future. Now, that all this, well, basically, when would this be available? There are two events in 2018, and you find that the commercial companies are gunning for it. 2018, the Winter Olympics in uh, South Korea, or the 2018 World Cup, Soccer World Cup in Moscow. That is before the standardization, that's before the standard is available, and people claim that standard might be available around 2018, 2019, and by the year 2020, Boris Johnson, the current mayor of London, claimed that the whole of London will be enabled by 5G. And then certainly we find that in 2022, the World Cup, which was supposed to occur in Peter, but now they sort of have to think about it differently. But certainly that event, you find that there will be uh, 5G available. So what that really means is that people are trying to find really, so to say, events that they can publicize the availability of 5G. Okay, now that's my last slide. What I'd like to say something is about building the big picture. Well, the 5G vision is there. Now, that vision might not be achievable, but certainly we know that it is coming. And that even, say, for example, the 800 gigabit, even is 10% of that 80 gigabit, that's very, very fast. And so it's us, and that's really you, that you have to come up with new ideas, how to make use of such technology. So we need to create new applications, new apps, so that we could also combine with other disruptive technology whereby we could actually use the speed that's available and so that we can communicate while we're on the move. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I think that how we could build a big picture so that we can actually go about designing and thinking of what to do for the big picture. Okay, thank you.